If you're trying to grow your online business and you're barely getting any traction, then this video is for you. If you're trying all the things that you've learned from the experts, you're applying it in your business and still nothing seems to move forward in your business, then this one's for you. If you've already invested money in online courses and coaches and you barely see any movement in your business, then you're in the right place, my friend. Well, if this is of any consolation to you, I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years. And you know what? One of the biggest challenges I faced is when I transitioned to the online space. Growing your online business is not a joke. More so if you've tried different ways that barely worked for you. And this is why in this video, I'm sharing with you what I've learned from the experts that didn't work for me, why it didn't work for me, what I did that worked for me, and what you can do to start seeing results for your online business. So if you're getting curious and you're very interested, then keep watching this video up to the very end. I also upload a new video every Wednesday that will help you grow your online business. So hit that subscribe button and the bell so you won't miss any video I post. So in this video, I'll be covering three areas, target audience, social media engagement, and selling through launches and webinars. So let's talk about what I've learned from the experts about target audience. Two things. One is that you need to be where they are, and the other one is specifically for coaches and online course creators like me, that we need to have a story and something that's transformative, a story that we have overcome a situation in our lives that we have overcome and what we can also help others overcome. So that's basically what experts say when it comes to creating an online course or creating a coaching program because it just makes it more personal and it makes you more passionate about it and then you can really talk about what you can do for others. Well, I had a huge problem with both. With finding my audience, I didn't really know where exactly they were because they were all over the place. So I was getting exhausted moving from platform to platform because my audience was scattered everywhere. And then with my story, so I started with an online course helping people start and build a sustainable business because I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. I want to help people set up a business, build it, and for that business to last for a long time. But my story was so old. Like it, yes, it's powerful, but it was like back in 1999 when I started my business and the story was not fresh anymore. I'm not anymore in that single mom phase left with two, full custody of her two sons. So that motivated me to start my business. But my story lacked the power to influence others because it was too old. And so even if I kept talking about the transformation that happened to me and what I can help them with, you know, it was still old. So it lacked the fresh. So what did I do? Well, what I did with my audience and with my story um, kind of happened simultaneously. So I realized because I was getting so frustrated, I realized that my pain is the same pain that my target audience is going through. So instead of focusing on where my audience is, I started focusing on their pain point. So what's that pain point? The same pain point I was going through that I was struggling navigating through the online space, that none of what the experts were saying or are saying is even working for me, that it's really hard to grow your online business. So all those challenges led me to a solution. So I found a solution for my business and that solution is what I'm now offering to my audience. And so my story was refreshed because now my story is very, very new. It's about navigating through the online space and the challenges I went through. And so I was able to pinpoint the pain point of my audience, which made my offer more targeted. So what can you start doing that will finally bring results for your business? My suggestion is to focus on the pain point of your audience. So instead of finding where they are, and instead of focusing on the demographics, focus on their pain point. But that pain point is something that you should be able to relate to. It should be something also fresh with what you're going through. So it may not be exactly the same problem, but exactly kind of the same feeling that they're having and you're having at this point 
in your entrepreneurial journey, or even if it's just like pretty new, like a few years old. So maybe if you're just like me and your story is too far way behind you, like you're a recovered drug addict or alcoholic, and that's one thing that you're helping people with, and but your story is like 20 years ago. So think of another story that you can probably start focusing on, something more fresh, and then feel that pain and then relate it to the pain of your audience. Now, if you want to learn how to create a more targeted offer that will also help you pinpoint the pain point of your audience, I want to invite you to my five-day challenge. So just type the link you see on the screen or you can head later to the video description. So another thing I've learned from experts that didn't work for me is the social media engagement. And so what I've learned is that you need to be more engaging so that people will trust you. So it's about building relationships. And I'm fine with building relationships. I don't have a problem with that. So let's start first with DMing because that's one of the things I've also learned that you drop a DM, direct message, whether on Instagram or on Facebook. And I remember I got a DM from someone who's already huge in the business coaching industry. And I felt so happy. So this was when I was starting in the online space. And I felt so excited and so happy that this person paid attention to me. And so we really had a good conversation going on for a while, like not just text messages, but we were exchanging voice recording and we kind of had even like um, a same circle of uh, people we know and so it was pretty interesting and then uh i wasn't ready for his offer back then i was just starting and what he was offering was so way ahead of me way advanced and i kind of felt sad when he stopped talking to me but i understand now because when you're trying to build relationships on social media through dm you know you become very personable because you do want to get that person as a prospect and of course client right you're not there to just build relationship for the heck of relationship like you're looking for a friend you're there because you're trying to build relationships in business whether it's going to turn into a client or someone you can collaborate with or someone who can refer people to you but if none of those things will even happen then what's the point of continuously talking to the person when you can jump to the next one that can be more productive and so what i'm saying is it wasn't really a waste of his time he tried and i believe that we can keep doing that for our businesses but it really can consume so much of your time and then of course you can really make the other person feel bad right just like what happened to me and then you have the um, engaging with other social media pages or like on instagram you can go and follow the influencers in your industry or just um, like with me like other coaches and engage with their posts or go to their posts and be more engaging so that people can see you and they can see you and they'll also check you out the problem with that is even if people check you out, it's not like it converts. I don't know about you, but it wasn't converting for me. And for me as an entrepreneur, I want things, everything I do to convert. I don't care if it takes time for as long as it's getting there. And so what was happening, even with Instagram and, you know, me trying to be more engaging, yeah, people check me out, but they don't convert. Okay. And this is the same thing that people are doing to me now. They're there in my post trying to say something. And sometimes I check them out. Sometimes I don't because I'm pretty familiar with the game. And then with Facebook you join Facebook groups and show your expertise and that's fine but some Facebook groups and I have my own growing Facebook group for a Christian woman entrepreneur so if you fall in that category I also want to invite you to be a part of that group you can go later to the video description I'll include all the links there that I mentioned in this video but I know that in groups you're just not allowed to post anything so if you're trying to be more engaging and showing your expertise it not only takes time too much of your time but it barely converts and so I kind of got exhausted doing all those methods that I've learned from experts. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm so sick of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these people find me. Instead of me jumping from place to place, group to group, from one Instagram account to the next, I'm going to make these people find me. And so that led me to find a solution. And the solution is a targeted online presence. So I started building a more targeted online presence. And eventually, these people started finding me from different platforms. Some people found me through Instagram, some through Facebook, some even through these YouTube videos. 
So that just shows that when you create a targeted online presence, your target audience will start finding you. So if you're interested in that, I suggest you download. If you haven't downloaded my free uh, PDF guide on how to create a targeted online presence, if you haven't downloaded that, then again, type the link you see on the screen or you can head later to the video description. So another thing I've learned from experts that didn't work for me is selling through live launches and webinars. So again, for coaches and online course creators like me, the best place to really promote and sell our online courses or coaching programs is through a live launch or a webinar. And so I did that and it was pretty fun and it was pretty effective in the sense that you know, people showed up in my webinar, they watched my webinars up to the very end, even if it was a, an hour and a half. And in those webinars and live launches, so you offer something very, very valuable for free, but at the end of your live launch or your webinar, you now start selling whatever it is you're promoting. And so I don't have a problem selling. In fact, it was effective. But the thing was, it's really very difficult. I mean, for some, probably it's so easy for them once it's automated. The thing with me is when I put my live webinars on demand, so on demand is when you automate everything, it looks like it's live. You set your own schedule, you choose the time that you're going to watch it. So it looks live, but it's not live. It was recorded. It was from the live webinar. So I started doing that, thinking it was going to be easy, but it wasn't producing the same result as my live webinars. The problem with the live webinar is you can only do it like quarterly. And sometimes people even do it like twice a year. Sometimes people even do it once a year, depending on how big your promotion is. And so it took a lot of time from me. And then just the preparation alone was just so exhausting. And so, and I'm doing so many different things you know I'm still managing another business another business I started years ago before I even started with my online coaching business and so there's just so many things going on um, even in my business and I don't really have time to spend for all those time consuming and just workload heavy types of uh, ways of selling my online course and my coaching program and then of course the webinar platform is not cheap and so it was like taking in so much money from me for something that was barely bringing results because it was just I just wanted something simple. And so I was like, you know what? I want something simple. If I can do it for free, it's better. I want something that will convert faster. And that's when I started doing my five-day challenge. So I didn't even follow the expert's advice also in doing a five-day challenge because everything I was researching on was pointing me to doing paid ads for it to be more effective. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to give it a try. And so I launched a five-day challenge for just a week and I was able to fill up like so many spots more than my live webinar. And so I started like doing the five-day challenge, just coming, you know, uh, going live for 30 minutes every day from Monday to Friday. And it was just so much fun. It's so much easy for me. I mean, I can be anywhere and still do my challenge, you know, my live challenge challenge for the day it was just easy it was low maintenance it was free I was doing it in the Facebook group and I'm like you know what this is what I'm gonna do from now on and this is why I'm inviting you to my five-day challenge again you can just type the link you see on the screen you will learn how to create a targeted offer that will help you create a more targeted online presence or you can head later to the video description for the link so going back to what you can do what you can start doing so you can start seeing results for the growth of your online business going back to social media engagement just focus on what you can handle you know don't make the same mistake i did of jumping from one place to the other place just looking for your audience of course the best advice i can give you is exactly what i did is to create a targeted online presence and this is why i'm you know i was telling you earlier to download your free guide if you haven't downloaded it and that's the reason why I'm inviting you to my five-day challenge. But other than that, my suggestion for you so you can start seeing growth is to just keep things simple. And same thing with launches and webinars. You know, if you can keep it simple, the better. I just actually finished a discovery call with a, a prospective client. And this was the same advice I gave her because she's so busy. She still has her job. She still has an offline business. She's trying to grow her online business. And she said, Lisa, how do I manage all these? I barely have time. And so I told her, and I'm telling you the same thing I told her, ask yourself, what is it that you can really do easily? And how much 
time can you commit to it? What's important really in growing your online business is consistency. If you can only commit once a month video, for instance, then go for it. Just make sure that you do it once a month. And live YouTube videos are not easy to make. Okay, so I would have done things differently, but because I'm committed to doing my YouTube videos, I'm doing this. But what works better for me and what's easier is when I do my Facebook lives or Instagram lives. So that's something that you can also do in building your audience trust. Just keep doing it regularly for as long as you have your um, target niche, you know who your audience is, then you can just start, you know, talking about something valuable that can help them. This is what the five day challenge in creating a targeted offer will help you with because it will just keep you more focused and you can even, even and use that in creating your content, whether it's video, whether it's a blog, whatever it is you're going to use for your business. So keep it simple. That's my advice. Whether it's you're selling your online course, you're selling your coaching program, you're engaging in social media, keep it simple. For me, if I can save money and I can save time, but producing better results, that would be the best. And that's exactly what I want for you too. So to recap, here's what I did. First, I created a new story. A fresh new story and then next I focused on my pain point and also my audience pain point and created a targeted offer and I also instead of jumping from one platform to the next created a targeted online presence so that my audience will find me instead of me looking all over the place for them and then of course I created a five-day challenge instead of doing live webinars and launches and so I hope you can also find a better way of streamlining everything based on what I've shared with you today and let me know in the comments below how this video has helped you and what you can stop doing, what you can continue doing, what you will start doing, and what you will do differently. So don't forget to download your free PDF guide and I hope I'll see you in the five-day challenge. And I also hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.